Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Be Well, Be Keto, and today I'm super excited to have my friends Chris and Miriam Bear from Keto Chow on the show today. They have some updates to let you know of how they can support you on your keto journey, as well as updates on their own family's keto journey. And I just so admire this couple. They have raised their kids in such an exceptional way, and they are great parents. So I can't wait for you to hear their wisdom. Let's go say hi to Chris and Miriam. Welcome to the Be Well, Be Keto podcast, where we showcase ordinary people who have achieved extraordinary results. Your host is the high energy girl, health coach, and personal trainer, Tracy Gluheit. Hey, beautiful. My name is Tracy, and I'm a health coach and personal trainer and founder of HighEnergyGirl.com. My passion is to help women become high energy, fat burning phenoms without starving to death and spending hours in the gym. So are you like exhausted from the crazy holidays and maybe feeling a little bit of fluffy? Well, guess what? You are in luck because I put together a high energy transformation guide and it is completely free. And it's going to help you boost your energy, banish brain fog, build a little muscle, and burn off that belly fat. Okay, so here's what is in the guide. First off, it starts with mindset, because let's face it, your body can do it, it's your mind you have to convince. Next, we have food. There are three phases of the food plan to help you heal your body and create a fat-burning machine. It is awesome, trust me. (laughs) Also, fitness, we have components for both the home and the gym, beginning, intermediate, and advanced, because if you want to age stronger, then you need to move. And lastly, and most important, is self-care, because let's face it, we women are so crazy busy taking care of everybody else, our homes, our jobs, our families, that we don't take time for ourselves. And even on the airplane, the flight attendant says to put your oxygen mask on first. So grab this free guide, 21 Days High Energy Transformation. Just click on the link below and that will show up in your inbox right away. Have you joined the Facebook group yet? I have a new Facebook group called High Energy Girls. And That is pretty much where I'm hanging out these days, and I would love to have you a part of the group. So head on over to High Energy Girls on Facebook. Hey, Chris and Miriam, thanks so much for coming back on the show today. Well, thanks. Hey, how are you? Hi. It's so good to know that you guys are doing so well, and um, I can't wait to catch up. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So for the listeners who may not know you, I'd be surprised if there was one, but maybe there's one. (laughs) Why don't you just tell us a little bit of background, who you are, and then we'll kind of get to the juicy details. Well, I'm Miriam Bear, and uh, my husband's Chris Bear. And anyway, we have a company that we made. It's called Keto Chow, and it is um, a meal replacement shake with all the nutrients, vitamins, minerals you need to replace one of your meals. So if you wanted to do it three times a day, you could. Um, And if you just did it like for breakfast or whatever, you'd still have to make sure you got enough nutrients in your other meals. Um, But it's made so you could get a third of your daily caloric intake in one of those meals. So um, yeah, you add your own fat to it. It's really cool because um, you can do it um, however you want for the body, for your body, because everybody's not the same. Everybody doesn't have the same macros. So to have a one-size-fits-all shake isn't necessarily ideal. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, what our product is. Yep. And you guys have been around for how long? So since uh, 2015 is okay. when we started doing all this. Kind of started to go at it big uh, in 2016. And I quit my day job in 2018, mm-hmm. almost a year ago this yay, month. Yay, yay. So it's been interesting. Uh, we're finally going to be getting off Cobra for our insurance. That'll yeah, be, that'll, that'll be, be awesome. Fun. Oh, but, good. <laughs> yeah, that's... Um, so, but let's kind of go back. So, so for those that don't know yet, 
Can you give us like a little bit of why you started this whole company and kind of like the background of it? Yeah, so that's that'll probably be me to answer that one. So I was way back in 2014. Um, I wanted to lose some weight, and there was uh, there's this movement for a nutritionally complete meal replacement shake um, and making your own recipes and things like that. So I I got into that, but it was it was high carbohydrate. Um, it was actually made with uh, corn masa flour. Oh. But, yeah, so super high carb. Um, anyway, so I did that for about nine months. I had lost 12 pounds. I gained it all back. Um, and I had heard about this keto thing. So I found another recipe for, a, a, once again, a nutritionally complete meal replacement. And mixed it up and jumped right in and got keto flu real bad. Uh, turns out the guy who made that recipe... Didn't know anything about keto. He just knew it was high fat and just made this recipe and just kind of threw it out there. Didn't have enough sodium or potassium or magnesium, any of that. So I found a different recipe, made my own, started experimenting with stuff and came up with what I thought was a really good tasting shake. Um, and... People kept asking to try it and to get samples of it. And so we put it up for sale on our site. And at first it was just a really small thing. You know, I would get home from work and I would, um, people had ordered, you know, a, a, some samples or maybe a 21 meal supply, things like that. And I would just mix up each individual every night order. And, you know, there was only three or four orders a day it wasn't that bad and then it started to get pretty nuts and Miriam was uh, working for one of our neighbors doing craft stuff for their uh, photography supply business like like sets and things accessories <laughs> accessories and, and yeah. things and I convinced her that it would probably be better if she helped me with keto chow instead so she quit that job and help, started helping me out. And so she was doing the shipping while I was doing the mixing. And it just kind of exploded from there. Uh, in 2016, we started the work to, do, to get a co-packer to do all of the, the stuff for us. Because at that, we, we wanted our house back. <laughs> and yeah so that's that's allowed us to just grow exponentially um because they have the big facility and we're putting all the stuff in the really pretty packaging and it's it's just so much better to go with that so yeah that's just kind of how it all started i i'm an engineer um and i was looking for something to fill a need that I had, which is that I'm excessively lazy, but I wanted to do keto and not have to worry about ke getting keto flu again. So, And yeah. did you have success with keto after you figured this whole thing out? Yeah. So um, that first year, I lost about 60 pounds. Wow. So... And at that point, Miriam was doing Whole30, mm -hmm. um, which she, she actually had pretty good success with that. And, and for those that don't know, Whole30, is it's a lot like paleo. Um, you're, you're, you're not having sugar. You're not having flour. You're not having milk or dairy. Um, you're just going for whole foods. You can have fruit, but by and large, it, it's, it's kind of a low-carb low low diet in disguise. Mm -hmm. And it is a good way to eliminate stuff that might be causing you problems. And then you slowly add things in and find out, oh, you know what? I've got this issue with, with beans or with wheat. Um, but one of her friends started doing keto as well because she had seen the success I was having. So Miriam 
decided that she would start doing keto as well. Stop making three meals a day. <laughs> yeah, because there was the keto food, there was the Whole30 food, and there was the kids not doing keto food. <laughs> Kid cuisine. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. So um, nowadays um, we pretty much just make keto food at our house. Um, the kids who aren't doing keto – well, they'll they'll eat whatever lunch at school, or uh, we we'll, they'll sneak crackers or have an yeah, apple. They, buy, <laughs> but they can go buy stuff with their own money. Yep. Oh. We, don't, we usually don't buy carby stuff just because. I mean, I can't in good conscience give my kids candy very much. And they got some for Christmas, but yeah, it's just. What it did to me, I don't want to cause that to my kids. You know what? I really admire that a lot. That is that is what you just said is hits the nail on the head. And how old are you guys' as kids? So we've got some 17-year-olds, a almost 15-year-old, some 13-year-olds, and an 11-year-old. And so for no, those that's not list, for those listeners, that they have two sets of twins, right? That's yeah. correct. Yeah. <laughs> What are the chances, man? That's awesome. Apparently, pretty high. <laughs> but uh, but one thing that one thing to be to be certain of, we're not we don't force our kids to eat keto. Uh, that would be the wrong way to go about it. Uh, you do that, and that's that's well, that's that's what they're going to rebel about. Um, but we do have two daughters who have chosen to do keto, um, and they're really strict. Um, we don't have any adherence problems with them. They make their own lunches and, you know, they don't yeah. deliberately eat anything carby. Whenever we go out to dinner, they've actually gotten a lot better. Um, it used to be when we would go to a place, they would ask us what, what they, they could eat. Yeah. What can I have? What can I have? Can I have that? Can I have that? And now they've gotten to the point where they're able to figure that out on their own. It's really cool. Oh, that's super sweet. So let me ask Miriam now. So when you were at Whole30, uh, use your words, Tracy. <laughs> when you were doing Whole30 versus now, because I just saw somebody post yesterday about how Whole30 is so restrictive and they want to go keto because they think it will be easier. What was your experience in the different you know, ways of eating? I, I did think it was restrictive when I started. I started, me and my two neighbors started together and we were actually swapping some dinners and that made it a little easier because we kind of, um, I think when you have somebody on your team, it's, you have accountability as well as encouragement. And so, you know, we kind of were doing it together and I, it was hard because there was no dairy, but because there was fruit, like there's sweet things, I felt like I wasn't going to die. So even though I wasn't having like the grains, as much or like the dressings and stuff I felt I still felt like I had a treat so it was hard when I started but I really think it was a natural way to get to keto like I feel like if I didn't do whole 30 first I probably would have struggled more with keto and restricting more things um, because I think that you know when we first heard about keto um, we we heard about it through our son's uh, neurologist because he was having seizures at the time He's, he's not anymore. He's doing really well. But um, they were putting him on medication, and he every medicine he tried wouldn't stop the seizures. And so they said, well, here's one more medicine we'll try, and if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll recommend a ketogenic diet. And so, of course, we looked it up to see what it was, and I just thought, how can a child, you know, live like this, having hmm. nuts and, and butter and meat? You know, like I, I just I didn't understand how many things you could have. And I just thought, you know, I just read the high fat and I was just overwhelmed mm-hmm. and thought this will never work. But <laughs> the more, you know, we learned about it and after Chris decided he was going to do it, it, I mean, it just makes sense. There's so many things you can have. And I really think that if I didn't do Whole30, it probably would have been harder to go keto because that was kind of a, a step, natural progression in the right direction. Because the only thing I really had to cut out was fruit. Okay. Yeah. So for me, when I went keto, it was not that hard um, because I ate a lot of salads and that was pretty much my favorite food ever is salads. And so I don't even think I ever showed up on the urine sticks as being, you know, in the purples or whatever. 
because mm-hmm. um, I think my body may have already been doing it. Um, never went into like, you know, it didn't get the keto flu, thankfully. Um, but anyhow, so that's interesting that you had a pretty good experience. But have, how long have you been back on keto? Um, three, almost three years. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and there's been ups and downs. It's, it's been, um, interesting. Cause I think when you first start, you're super strict and you're really good. And I think after a while you kind of let things slip in. And even if it's not carbs, like just too many keto treats, I think will make you gain weight. And so I think you have to kind of recommit and, and also, you know, reinvent. Cause sometimes when you lose weight, then your um your metabolism changes yeah your metabolism changes but then also if you get to hit a stall i I know we talk about this a lot is you know when you hit a stall you kind of have to try something different to get your body re restarted again so sometimes you know what you've been doing since you started just stops working and so you have to change it up a little bit too i noticed that quite a bit yeah yeah, I think our body is smart and it adapts to whatever it is that we're doing. And that goes with food sensitivities too. Um, when I coach clients and we talk about food sensitivities, they may not experience symptoms for a certain food until they eliminate it and then bring it back because your oh, yeah, body yeah. adapts to it, right? Yeah. So now I know something else is up with you guys, something new. Um, do you guys have a new product? I thought I saw something on Instagram. Got a couple. Yeah, we actually oh. have a couple um, new products. We have uh, two different uh, electrolyte supplements. We have one that's called Fasting Drops. We're actually <laughs> gonna, we're changing the name of that to Electrolyte Drops because people think that it's just for fasting. It's not just for fasting, yeah. but it works great for fasting. Yeah, it works. It works good. But, but it's uh, sodium, magnesium, and it's concentrated. And you just put it in water. I mean, really, you could put it in any kind of liquid or even on your food if you want. It just tastes salty. It has no sweetener or flavor or anything. It's just the the minerals. So. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. And what are the um, micros on that? Like, how many grams of each thing do they have? So I'm. Tr- let me pull that up really quick. If I remember correctly, let's see. Uh, we should have been prepared. Yeah. <laughs> it's the sort of thing that I don't ever memorize because it's written down right on the side. Okay, so a half teaspoon, which so it it comes in a, at a in a little bottle or a big bottle with an empty little bottle, and the reason for that is the lid of the little bottle is uh, is what you can use for a measuring device. So if you fill up the entire lid, that's a half teaspoon, which is a serving size. Um, And that has 125 milligrams of sodium, 45 milligrams of magnesium, 130 milligrams of potassium, and 390 milligrams of chloride. And there's also a bunch of trace minerals in there as well, um, because it's all coming, it's purified from the water of the Great Salt Lake. Oh, that's convenient. Do you guys go out there and do it yourself? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we have a company that does that for us. It's, it's what they do. And the, the cool thing about this is, so if you, it's, it's a, a lot of people will say, well, how do you use this? And it's like, um, well, it's, it's a lot like using pink, pink Himalayan yeah, salt, using salt in your or, water. The, or the gray Celtic salt, except it doesn't taste like dirt and it doesn't leave sand in the bottom of your glass. Oh. <laughs> so, and, and all of the, the magnesium and everything else that's in it is highly bioavailable because it's already in solution. Oh. It, none of it's crystallized. None of it's like, you know, if, if you if you go to the, the supermarket and you try to buy, buy a magnesium supplement, it's going to be magnesium uh, oxide, which doesn't absorb at all, whereas this stuff will it'll just absorb. If, if it says 45 milligrams of magnesium on the label, you're going to actually get 45 milligrams of magnesium. Um, and so it, it, Miriam really likes to use the fasting drops, which, once again, they're going to be called electrolyte drops pretty soon. Um, she likes to use those when she gets a headache mm-hmm. um, and just put it in water. Um, I like to use it when I'm doing a 36-hour or longer fast because when I'm doing those, I don't want... I just want water and and electrolytes. 
I don't want flavors. I don't want sweeteners. And this makes sure that, you know, my hunger doesn't get triggered by anything. Mm -hmm. So go back to that. So the flavors and sweeteners, explain Mm -hmm. why that is, can be an issue for some people. Well, so I, and I, I can't talk for all people, but for me, when, when I taste, so if I'm doing a, a long fast, so longer than, you know, 24 hours, um, most of the time when I'm doing a fast, it's 36. You know, I, I eat dinner at night. I don't eat for an entire day and I eat breakfast the, the second or third day, whatever. So 36 hours. And if I, if I'm using like diet soda or if I'm using, um, anything that has any flavor in it, even uh, like LaCroix or one of those, for me personally, that triggers hunger because my body's like, oh, we're eating stuff. I'm like, no, we're not. It's like, but I want to eat stuff now. <laughs> well, sorry, we're not eating stuff. Well, then why are you giving me this stuff that has flavor? Um, you know, it's it's triggering that. So when, yeah, when I do a, a fast, I I just want the electrolytes without anything else. Okay, so, that's interesting. And, you know, other people might have different experiences. Um, most people I talk to have a similar reaction, but, yeah. And that's I why have, I don't yeah. eat keto treats, for me personally, because if I have one, then I want two or three or four. Yeah. Yep. So, well, I hear you. Well, and something that really worked well for us, we did a No Snack November um, back a couple, um, two in months November. ago, in November, <laughs> uh, where, you know, we could have keto treats and stuff like that, like a handful of almonds or whatever, if it was part of a meal, there were no snacks, nothing, none of that. And that really, it was, really changed things. It was nice because like, well, do I really want this cookie with my steak and eggs? <laughs> Not really. Like I'd rather just have my steak and eggs. Yeah. And, you know, whatever. So, so for other people, they may need the snack. I don't know. For I, I like to not raise my insulin, and doing that no snack November, I think that was absolutely fantastic. Um, so we'll probably we and it and it changed it changed our mindset. I don't really snack like I used to, which has helped a lot um, with my overall journey. But well, and I look at the food and say, well, do I have to have this? Like. Is it something I have to have so much that I'm going to have it be part of my meal? Then, then I'll save it and I want it, or I'll have half of it. You know, like you have a Lily's chocolate bar, you have four squares or something. You know, and uh, it was it was interesting how yeah our mindset slowly changed on that. Yep. I love that. That to me is is really important. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with keto gains, but Luis is pretty yep. like hardcore. He's like snacks are for babies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we uh, we actually got to meet Luis when we went to uh, Low Carb USA in San Diego. Oh. And I was talking with him for a while, and he's like, oh, yeah, I totally buy your stuff. I'm like, wait, you do? <laughs> I looked up, and yeah, he he's, I think he ordered from us, his, it might have even been way, way back in 2015. Oh, uh, yeah, that's awesome. So, kind of funny, mm-hmm. <laughs> small world. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. yeah. That well, is cool. I- I feel like that too, with snacks, like just talking to my kids and dealing with the kids. Like we're thinking about when we could take them to the ice castles, we got tickets to that. It's uh, something that's here. And um, we're like, well, do we have dinner before or after? Because if they come home from school, then they're going to die if we take them somewhere and they don't eat till seven. So I'm like, well, then we have to give Sam a snack. Like, but yeah, he actually our, legitimately our burns off his food. And, yeah. So he needs something, but whereas if you're if you're keto and fat adapted, you just don't need it as much. So of course our daughters that do keto really well, they we think they're lean mass hyper responders because they can't fast very yeah. long either. And lean mass hyper responder is a uh, Dave Feldman term. Um, those type of people, yeah, they just don't fast very well. Interesting. I've never heard that term. It's lean oh. mass hyper responder. Yeah. So, well, and it's it's one of his uh, things when when Dave Feldman went keto, and Dave he's he's an engineer who's doing all this really interesting stuff about cholesterol. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know who he is. He's um, cholesterol code or something like that. Yes, uh-huh. that he's the one. Um, 
his cholesterol went through the roof when he started keto. And he's done all this research and he's found a particular phenotype is the word that he uses, a particular group of people who all have similar characteristics. And they tend to be lean and they tend to not be able to fast very well and they tend to have really high cholesterol. And every, all of their biomarkers look absolutely fantastic except their LDL cholesterol. Yeah. Oh, and wow. He has some really, really interesting hypotheses and uh, stuff that he's done to to test out you know his theories um but he even has a facebook group about it he gave a uh, a bunch of talks over the in 2018 about it you should check it out it's really cool huh yeah i would i love learning and i love you know hearing about different things like that cuz i me personally i have an experience i love doing omad yeah yeah i I've been working on that a little bit too, and it was really satisfying to me. I like doing uh, one meal a day when I just, oh, I forgot to eat breakfast and lunch. It's like, huh, well, I guess it's time to eat. I'm kind of <laughs> hungry now. <laughs> yeah, when you're so busy, you're just like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I find, you know what I find though, and because I'm studying Chinese medicine and I'm studying like just different philosophies, that winter yeah. is not a good time to diet, even though it's New yeah. Year's and it's resolutions and all that. But your yeah. body wants to hold on to everything because it's, you know, cold outside. Oh, yeah. yeah. Totally makes sense. And the hibernation. And so we want to nourish and feed our bodies good food. Um, instead of trying to not eat. So, um, and your body will hold on. So it's harder to lose weight in the winter because your body wants that um, hibernation, you know, winter coat. So what you're saying is we should move to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I lived in Utah, I'd move anywhere south. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I mean, I, it's so funny because I'm in California and we're having like a cold spell here. And my oldest son is visiting from New York. And I, we went on a walk with the dogs. I'm like, it is so cold here. And I have like a, you know, really nice down jacket on and gloves and everything. And he's like, no, it's not. And he's wearing a sweatshirt. <laughs> 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 it's just perspective, right? Yeah. So what is the other product you guys have out? Yeah. So the other one. So most of the products that uh, we have at Keto Chow are Chris wanted something, so he made blah 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 um the other the the magnesium drops the mag drops that we have that was miriam told chris i want this you are gonna get it so i said it nice <laughs> yes you did <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was a mandated thing um but yeah so miriam uh, when, so when you're when your magnesium isn't as high as it should be you tend to get cramps and Miriam wanted a magnesium supplement, okay. like just straight up magnesium. So that's what the mag drops are. It's it's unlike so with the uh, the fasting drops or the electrolyte drop um, drops is the name's going to be changed to. That's kind of a mix of sodium, magnesium, and potassium. With the mag drops, it's for the most part just magnesium. So the the same half teaspoon, the lid. Um, has 200 milligrams of magnesium, um, as well as 30 milligrams of sodium, uh, 35 of potassium, a little boron, some sulfate, and uh, 610 milligrams of chloride. So it's it's mostly just for getting magnesium. So that if you're having problems with cramping or Headaches. Yeah, headaches. And, and we actually, uh, Dr. Ben Bickman, I, I still need to grab the reference. He posted a, uh, a, a study recently that somebody had put together where they gave type 2 diabetics 250 milligrams of magnesium a day as a supplement, and it improved their insulin sensitivity. Wow. Just that, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, so, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so we'll post that because it's cool. Yep, but yeah, I, that's I, great. Personally, I personally need more magnesium than most people. It runs in my family, so even though keto chow is designed to be nutritionally complete for most people, 
I still have to supplement with magnesium. So this is kind of a way to get that additional magnesium. And what happens when you don't? If I don't supplement magnesium, um, I will get really, really bad cramps in my quadriceps, so the front of the top of my legs, which is no fun. And sometimes I'll even get cramps in my abdominal muscles, which I had never experienced before until Sweet. and I, I went on a, a river rafting trip with my dad down the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. And I stayed keto the whole time. I didn't really have a way to mix up keto chow. And so my magnesium was starting to drop off and I, I forgot to pack magnesium pills. I usually have magnesium malate pills that I was taking. This was like a year ago before we even had the mag drops. Um, by the end of the trip, uh, in the middle of the night, I would wake up with just cramps like crazy. Wow. And it was really hard to get them worked out. Like I'd get a cramp in my calf. And so on our way back to Utah, we stopped in uh, this little town in Nevada where there was a grocery store, and I tried to find a magnesium supplement just to get rid of the cramping, to, to take care of it, even though we were going to be home in a couple hours. All I could find was magnesium oxide. That's all they had. And there was like five or six different versions of magnesium oxide or brands, but uh, I didn't even bother buying it because I knew it wouldn't do me any good. Wow. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I've never heard that. I mean, I've had the calf cramps before. Yeah. Yeah, having really... cramps in your quads, is, <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> wow, gosh. Yeah, that's crazy. So, um, and so explain why. So I know that a lot of people in the keto space take the magnesium pills. So you're yep. saying that the magnesium drops are better because? Well, so it's because it's, magnesium chloride um, it's already dissolved in water so it's all going to be absorbed and it's super bioavailable is the main things um, it also should uh, now some of the forms of magnesium like magnesium citrate have a laxative effect so you have to watch out for taking too much of it at the same time and there is a warning on the mag drops not to take a full day's worth, a you know, full day's dose really fast as well because <laughs> it can have the same laxative effect. Um, but I personally haven't experienced that with the mag drops, but we keep the warning there just in case. Yeah, when I first started keto, I did um, this <laughs> recipe with, what was it, the Calm, Magnesium Calm. Uh -huh. Oh, that's magnesium citrate, isn't it? No, it's carbonate. Oh, it's magnesium wow. carbonate, and I will never take that again. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was not fun. <laughs> yeah. I mean, of the of the different types of magnesium, it's the general consensus is the very very best one is magnesium chloride. Then you've got magnesium malate and glycinate. Um, magnesium citrate is really bioavailable, but it gives you the runs. And the absolute worst is uh, magnesium um, oxide. And strangely enough, uh, Epsom salts, which is magnesium sulfate, yeah, I mean, you don't take that internally, but it makes a fantastic bath. Yeah, we do that a lot. Yeah, you know, I interviewed Carrie Brown for the show oh. a while back. And she was talking about that's how she was able to help. That was one of the ways she um, detoxified her body was doing magnesium baths. Uh -huh. um, she says it's actually, she did the actual magnesium flakes. She says they're way better detoxifiers than just uh -huh. the Epsom salt. That's yeah. what we use, the magnesium flakes. We just buy yeah. them on Amazon. And that's magnesium uh, chloride, in case you're wondering. Okay. And they, they sound like broken glass pouring into oh, the yeah, bathtub. So funny. It's, it's really like, funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bought some because she told me about it. And I like to, like right now I just started um, a three-day cleanse, which consists of just like bone broth and magnesium baths and sweating and breathing exercises for just like total detoxification. 
Yeah. Um, so I am dry brushing. So I'll do some dry brushing and then go hop into a magnesium bath for the next three days. Oh, that's nice. That yeah. sounds really good. Yeah. <laughs> I want to do that. It's a good way to get rid of winter or there the holidays, you, you know? <laughs> Yeah, you wanted to take a bath last night. It didn't take, happen. Take a bath tonight. <laughs> so <laughs> how's everything else going with you guys? Like, what is new and good as far as, like, what's your work-life balance with having all those kids? And, you know, what are, um, how are things going with that? Well, so we, there's a couple things going on. Um, we'll probably get to this in a bit, but we finally decided to just bite the bullet and we're doing a keto conference locally oh um, yeah I, um but and that's coming up uh in april but in the immediate future what we so miriam wanted to do something for the new year um and we ended up we, well it was it was between um working out on the treadmill or lifting weights my preference is lifting weights but the problem is the the time that we have to do that is in the morning when we're trying to get the kids off to school and it just it it didn't really mesh well so we finally ended up deciding to do um p90 not p90x or insanity because that's crazy you gotta start at the bottom (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and we had done p90 before and it's it's just a 90-day program with kind of a workout a a little bit of lifting a little bit of cardio yeah and so stretching it's nice we started it on Monday, Monday, the 31st, and planning on doing it for the next 90 days. And, and it's kind of nice because we can just do it right in the middle of the family area where all the kids are coming and going in the morning. And we can tell people that, hey, go change your underwear. Go, go take a shower. Go do the dishes. <laughs> go do the dishes. <laughs> Bring it to eat breakfast. Wow, you have them trained. Oh, yeah. uh, except the part With where the they reminders. <laughs> yeah, it's they, it's hilarious. They to do me. pretty good though. They'll go to leave and they're like, they're good, good. "I didn't eat. I didn't eat any breakfast." Well, like, well, looks like you're passing. <laughs> well, whose whose job was that? <laughs> well, I thought you guys were gonna give me breakfast. No, yeah. we we haven't always been a really good make breakfast for the kids. When they were little, I made them breakfast, but yeah. since they. Since they decided they want to have an opinion, I'm like, then make your own. Yeah. <laughs> make what you want. These are the foods that we have provided for you. And we don't usually eat breakfast until a Til lot like later. 11 or 10 yeah. or 11. Then we try to eat dinner early as yeah. well. We want to keep our eating window cl- um, closer together so that we're yeah. not having a blood glucose rise all hours. Yep. So talk about that. So talk about, and Chris, I also want you to talk about like your 36 hour fasting. Why do you do it? How do you feel? Yeah. So, um, do you want to talk about the, the not the, the smaller eating window and not eating dinner so late? Sure. Mm-hmm. Start with that and then go to the, the other one. Yeah. So, um, what I've read, Maria Emmerich mostly has, uh, kind of helped me understand this, but um, if you have every time you eat anything, even eggs, even you know anything that is small, you're still going to have a little bit of a blood glucose response because your body is designed to take care of that. And so um, it's not going to be a huge spike if it's not a carb, but you're still going to have a glucose response. And if you keep eating, which is another reason why snacks aren't so great, if you keep eating and eating and eating and eating every time you eat, you're going to have a little bit of blood glucose response and, and insulin and insulin response. And so. If you keep your window shorter, so if you have a late breakfast and then a, and then a lunch or whatever, or even combine your breakfast and lunch together and then have dinner at an earlier hour, you're going to keep that eating window uh, narrower and then you're going to be able to utilize your um, your fat stores if you're losing weight and you're going to be able to have more energy because you're using the ketones, you're just going to be much more efficient uh, because you're not having that bl- glucose and, and insulin response all the time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And and I agree with that. Plus, I find that when I do eat, I get tired. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Thanksgiving every day. <laughs> <laughs> I think that our, our bodies enjoy it, you know? Yeah. The, the fasting. And, and it's like it frees up energy to do different things. Yeah, it really does. 
it, it frees up so much. You don't have to prepare food. You don't have to do this. And then your brain, I mean, just have this good cognitive function because your brain is so clear when you're fasting. I just love the way I feel when I'm fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. So then that leads us to Chris's 36 yep. hour fast. Do you not do that, Miriam? No, I, she's I have the one who off made and me on. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't done too many 36 hours because I actually was talking about this on our live last night on Facebook. Um, I don't want to leave my kids because they're not going to be living in our house forever and they need to eat every day. <laughs> and so. I feel like I need to be eating with them. And so if I do a fast, I'll try to make sure I have a really good nutrient dense dinner with them and then I'll fast afterward. And so I've been kind of sticking to 24s. I like the way the 36 feels like I, I would like to do it more often, especially to help with like the weight loss and getting the ketones higher. It just, it just feels really good. But I, I told myself I'm not going to ditch my kids. I'm going to be with my kids. I'm going to have dinner with them. I'm going to help prepare it because if I don't help them, you know, make dinners and, and eat dinner with them, they're not eating as healthy because they're doing more shortcuts. I'm not spending as much time with them. And I feel like to be a good mother, I need to help teach them what to eat right, how to eat, how to prepare things because otherwise they're going to just go off to college and eat junk all the time because it's easy and cheap and – yeah, talk about the calendars. Oh yeah, and what we we do a meal plan with them, and this is we're kind of really want to teach them to be independent. So I just take a calendar and I print it out, and then every day one of the kids pick a day, and I just let them pick whatever day they want, and I let them pick whatever meal they want to make for dinner, and so um, we'll just write Audrey, and Audrey's our uh, <laughs> seventeen year old. She's the oldest. She picks salmon every time. <laughs> <laughs> Every single week, she wants to make a big thing of salmon. And we'll get the Sam's Club size or Costco size because we have eight people in our family. And so she'll just take it, open it up, stick it in a casserole dish, butter, you know, different seasonings, and just bake it. She just does it the same way every time because it's easy. I'm like, that's healthy and easy. And then she can make a salad or broccoli, whatever, on the side. And it's mm -hmm. super super easy but what's nice about doing something easy like that if you decide you wanted to have like like some keto rolls or something with it then you could take time making the special thing and you know the nutrient dense thing is easy because it's just you yeah. know, plopped in a casserole dish yeah. but anyway that's, our meal plan is really fun for us to do as a family because then then I just take a whole bunch of keto cookbooks and throw them out on the table. And Miriam has a problem. Not a problem. It's Miriam has a problem. <laughs> she a she problem. has a, a preponderance of keto cookbooks. I love keto cookbooks. <laughs> Me too. I have that too. Okay. It gives you the right answers. <laughs> it's right at your fingertips. And I yeah. think that it empowers our children to succeed. When they can look at a picture and say, I want to make that. First of all, they'll try different things. They'll try new things. And then they, I'll go and buy whatever ingredients we need to buy for it. And we're prepared. And I think that it just helps them and it helps us to succeed. And it helps us to spend time together. So that's one thing we've we're tried to do, yep. you know, as a family. So that's, that's fun for dinner, especially when uh, I'm being boring and just eating keto chow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. I love that idea. I need to be more creative because I get stuck in a rut and I just make the same things over and over. You um, know? I, I was well, trying to we, remember who. We do that too because a lot of times they'll just pick what they like, like the salmon yeah. that's the easiest for them well, to and make. One of them but... really likes to make peace, love, and low carb lasagna. That's also me. Oh, yeah. That's, that's because it's delightful. It's so good. It's like my favorite food ever. <laughs> See, I need to get back off of dairy because, like, I was leanest when I had no dairy and no nuts. And oh, okay. I think when I met you guys, I was dairy free and I'm mostly dairy free, but over the holidays and just during, you know, I don't know, the last couple months, I've been back on dairy and I have inflammation in my knuckles and in my knees from it, I'm sure. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting how sensitive people are to dairy. Like, I've never really had a problem with dairy, but when I did the Whole30 and cut dairy out, it was a lot easier to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting how, um, how dairy affects different people. But really, if you cut it out, it helps, helps a lot with weight loss for sure. 
Well, and I think everybody's body metabolizes things differently. So um, what might be great for some one person is not for the other, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and even just the dip difference between cheeses and uh, dairy, like heavy cream or milk. Like the milk, we yeah. just don't drink because it's too sweet. We drink heavy cream like crazy, but even if I cut heavy cream, I notice really a different. It, we well, yes, we, use it. <laughs> we don't drink it. I have in my mind, we're opening up a thing of heavy cream and yes, chugging it. Yes, we do. We drink it in our keto chat, so we drink it. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> but um, but it's it's still such a difference. Like you can have those hard cheeses and stuff, and and I don't notice bloating, but sometimes when I even have heavy cream, I'll feel bloated. And, and if I just cut back a little bit on the dairy, it's it's crazy how different it is. So yeah. I'll probably be seeing some of that in action. So I'm me personally, I'm doing a uh, 100 days of keto chow only. Um, this well, I started today, um, and the first part, I'm just trying to lose weight so I can win a, uh, a city contest for weight loss. Uh, but when I get down to the, uh, the second portion of it, I'm going to be doing just keto chow with different types of fat. And for about four weeks, I'm going to be doing avocado oil with uh, some MCT and really no dairy. Um, and then another part I'm going to be doing pretty much no dairy at all. And it'll be interesting to see how that changes things. Um, Cause I'll be getting blood tests and the whole deal during the, the experiment. Oh, cool. Yeah. I would love to hear your results at the end of those three months. Yeah. It'll be, it'll be kind of interesting. Um, now to your earlier question about uh, the fasting, um, the 36 hour fast thing is because Megan Ramos said so. Mm -hmm. um, she, she she said that uh, they find that a thirty six a, a couple of thirty six hour fasts in a week tend to give people the best results um, rather than doing because if you do a longer fast if you do like a three four seven day fast it takes your body a while to recover from that and it's it's kind of hard on you but if you do a just a 36 hour fast or a 24 hour fast or something like that you can do those fairly frequently and um even people who aren't doing keto can see a lot of the um of the positive benefits of a ketogenic diet just because they're fasting for 36 hours two or three times a week and so uh, in the, like I said, I'm doing this 100 days of keto chow where the only thing I'm going to be eating is keto chow, except for the days when I'm not eating anything. And this first part where I'm, I'm just concentrating on the weight loss, I'm going to be doing some, some more fasting. And I think it just before the final weigh in, I'm planning on fasting for three or four days just to really drive it home. What's your goal uh, with that? Um, beat everybody else. <laughs> uh, well, just speak, I'm, I'm trying to, well, my, my ultimate goal is to get back down to high school weight, which was 180. We'll see about that. <laughs> how far I'm away from that are, weight. how far do you have to go for that, Chris? Um, 10 let's pounds? See. No, I, I would need to lose probably about 45, 50 pounds in order to get to where I want to be. Um, back in last year, about this time, I was doing a 42 days of keto chow. Um, and during the five weeks that I was doing that, I lost 25 pounds. Wow. So, um, over the hundred days, I might even be able to pull it off. We'll see. Um, the second part of the experiment, I won't be concentrating on weight loss. I'll be doing science instead. Um, so weight loss might happen. I'm actually going to be ramping up the amount of calories I'm having each day to see if that lets me continue losing weight by my body increasing my metabolic rate. Because everything I've read say, uh, indicates that if you keep your carbs down, um, if you increase the amount of calories you're consuming that are chiefly from fat, 
then your body will just keep on turning on more stuff. You know, grow your hair faster and uh, run your body temperature higher and things like that. And and you'll you'll start to get like restless leg syndrome, things like that, where you're just you feel antsy and you decide, oh, I should just go out for a run because you know you've got the extra energy. So it'll be interesting to see what that does with the experiment and <laughs> all that fun stuff. That's so interesting. I I'm looking forward to hearing from you about that. Yeah, um, and it's oh, that's weird. Anyway, and it's going to be all finishing up right about the time that uh, we're going to be doing our low carb conference here in Salt Lake. Oh, cool. So, so why don't you tell people about that? You want to tell? Them? Oh yeah, um, we're really excited. It's been um, it's been fun to plan. It's taking a little bit of work, but um, we were actually really excited because we, when we decided to do it, we just contacted a bunch of uh, people that we've heard speak at other conferences, and I was just really impressed that so many people just want to do it. We got so many replies so quickly, and they're like, hey, let me look at my schedule. You know, it'd be, it'd be fun, and um, so we're, we're excited to have um, some Utah people here and some people from other places. We have... Um, doctors and um, we also are going to have our U Utah vendors. Uh, we kind of feel inspired by we did a Kansas City low carb KC the last two years we went to that and this last one they pretty much only had Kansas City vendors and we're the only people that were from out of town and but I think um, kind of the point was to build up your own community and to help people in your community to, to learn about these things. And so that's kind of where we're aiming. Like we want people in Salt Lake and Utah to know that these are options, that the, this is uh, the, the vendors, especially, you know, these are people that come from here and they're great and they're, you know, moving keto along. And then we have the, the people that are coming to speak are going to give us the real, you know, knowledge to help people to, to improve their lives. And you know, if they can come and listen to this and give keto a chance and, and try to help make their body healthier, then it's totally worth all the work to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's really good. I, I'm so tired of people thinking this is a fad and, <laughs> you know, I mean, fad. <laughs> what? A 100 year old fad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. And they, I mean, it's just nobody in my family does it, just me. I'm all by myself. So, you know, it's, um, it's, I wish that I could do what you guys are doing and just get the word out there that this is the healthiest way to live. Well, and it, it, it all kind of came together because um, we have, there are two doctors near us that are using ketogenic diets as a primary treatment for uh, weight loss and diabetes control. And we were talking to them and we were talking to, well, we have, let's see, how many bakeries that do keto stuff nearby us? Uh, at least four that make keto treats. Like that's all they do. There's Keto Cakes of Utah, Oh Hello Keto Bakery, Keeping It Keto Bunt Cakes. There's even a lady who has a bakery that and she goes she keto. keto. And so she has this whole shelf of keto stuff. So she has yeah. the regular bakery and then she has her keto stuff. And it's just gone crazy for her. She sells out all the time. Yeah. And we, we've been running a keto meetup um, here in Utah for about a year now. Yeah. And, you know, just trying to grow the community. And when it, it was just kind of a, we need, we need to uh, just bite the bullet and r do a conference because we love going to the conferences. Mm -hmm. We always learn so much. And yeah, we just decided, you know, there's enough of it. It seems like almost every community nowadays has enough support for keto that you could put on a conference like this. What um, city are you guys in? Salt Lake? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're in Salt Lake. So you guys are in a big city. Do you, I mean, do you guys actually live close to the city? Yeah, um, we're 30 so, minutes away. Yeah, we're, we're in. So there's the Salt Lake Valley, and we're, we're yeah, on we're the, the southern end. Yeah. Okay. So when, we're going to be putting on the conference kind of in the middle of the valley, and uh, we've we've actually had people signing up to uh, you know buying tickets to come, and we tried to price it really low. 
um, just so that you know people could afford to come. Um, we're not charging the vendors very much to come. Um, we're, we're mostly just trying to break even and be able to cover the expenses of some of the speakers because I mean, some of them are coming from pretty far away. Uh, Ivor Cummins is coming from Ireland, and wow. a bunch of the other speakers are coming from you know different parts of the United States, and you know, we're not trying to make money on this. This is no, we just want to let people know. Yeah, <clears throat> do you want to tell them who's speaking? Oh yeah, so um, locally we have Dr. Ben Bickman. Um, he's been doing a lot of stuff with insulin and glucagon and research there. Um, Drew Manning is supposed to be coming. He's the fit to fat to fit guy. Oh, yeah. Um, Dr. Peter Ballersted, who taught us all that if we really want to save the planet, we need to uh, have more cows, <laughs> like for realsies. Really interesting stuff. He, uh, What's his yeah. name? Oh, I, that's like somebody I need to hear. <laughs> yeah, so Dr. Peter Ballersted, B A L L E R. S T E D T. Um, he has some really good um, stuff up on YouTube, um, and you can find him on Twitter and Facebook uh, as Grass Based Health is his handle. He works in ruminant nutrition. Yeah, he he works for a seed company. He happened to go keto, and he's trying to get his two tribes together because people will say, "Oh, you have to have grass fed." You have to have this. And he's like, um, let me clear up some of the confusion here. And he, he, he lays out the realities of, of ruminants. And ruminants aren't destroying the planet. Uh, it, it, it's really fascinating stuff. But anyway, so he'll probably be talking about that. Um, Amy Berger uh, from Tuit Nutrition, um, she'll be coming. She generally talks about... Um, Alzheimer's? Yeah, she has Alzheimer's. Book. Yeah, I have her book because my mom has Alzheimer's. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And she she doesn't know if she's going to be speaking about Alzheimer's. She's, she's... She has some stuff she wants to talk about. <laughs> yeah. But I'm kind of trying to decide because I really like her talk. Yeah. Well, and we, uh, we, we're, we're leaving the, the subjects open to the speakers. And we're trying to give them enough time that they can just really go nuts. Because it seems like every time we go to one of these conferences, we'll be sitting there talking to... I think it might have even been Amy. And she was, she's like, yeah, so-and-so is going along, so I'm going to have to cut my talk down to 30 minutes. I don't know how I'm going to do that. So we're going to try to give people the time they need. Cool. Uh, but we got Dr. Adam Nally, Doc Muscles. Mm -hmm. um, he's coming. <laughs> Ivor Cummins, who wants to tell us probably all about the uh, calcium score and how it predicts heart disease. Um, Dave Feldman's minion, uh, Siobhan Huggins. Um, she's just a regular person who started getting into cholesterol lipids. research yeah, and lipids. She's been studying lipids. And uh, yeah, she's been she's been doing some really cool stuff. Uh, Brian Williamson, the keto evangelist, is coming. Um, we've got two our our two doctors from here in Utah, Dr. Nick Trujillo who's from the south end of the Utah Valley, and Dr. Ron Rigby, who's from Ogden, so north of Salt Lake. Um, Cindy Miller, Nurse Cindy, she's ask coming. Nurse Cindy. Yeah, ask Nurse Cindy. Uh, Amber O'Hearn, I bet she'll be talking about the carnivore diet. Yeah, she's a carnivore. <laughs> and uh, then we've got uh, Dr. Ken Berry is coming as well. And he wrote, Lies My Doctors Told Me. Yep. Wow. So, we have some other people who have said they they might be coming. Um, they one of, just confirmed. Yeah, and one of them says, if I say yes right now to another conference, my wife's going to kill me. So. <laughs> well, I'm going to think about that. <laughs> I'm going to think about it. So uh, anyway, it, it should shape up to be really good. We're going to do it two days um, just so that we can give, like I said, the speakers the time they need. And what are the dates again? So April it's, 26 and 27th. There you go. Okay. So mark you your calendars. Come. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. That sounds like an exciting list. And so um, do you have a website people can find out more info on that? 
So the best way to find it is ketosaltlake.com or Keto Utah. Wait, wait well, let me make sure that one's right. Let's see. <laughs> Keto Utah. Does that work? About it. it didn't do anything. Just thinking about it. <laughs> I know a Keto Salt Lake works. Um, we, I actually am putting most of the information up on the lowcarbevents.com website, um, which, uh, so a, a couple of months ago, we were talking about all the different um, keto conferences that were out and about. And just trying to figure out which ones to go to as vendors, which ones to attend, things like that. And I finally just decided that this was crazy. So I set up a, a calendar website, just lowcarbevents.com, so that I could personally keep track of everything that was going on. And it's every time I find a new conference, put it up there. There's no advertising. There's none of that. It's just... We want all of everybody to be able to know about all the different keto and low carb events that are going on, and so that's also where where you'll find out stuff about uh, the the low carb keto Salt Lake, and Keto Utah is not ours. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. So we're gonna go to lowcarbevents.com so that way, and then if there's any other links, we can always include those in the show notes. Yeah, and low carb Utah works as well. So low carb you know, Utah. Yeah, and ketosaltlake.com. I kind of went a little bit crazy registering domain names and pointing them all to the same spot. Oh, so <laughs> well, give me, send me over the links, and that way people can just go straight to the show notes page and click on it, it for whatever one you prefer. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Well, hey, Chris and Miriam, is there any parting words of wisdom you want to leave our listeners with? Um, I don't know. No. Do what's best for you. Yeah, just keep... try to take good care of your body. Keep calm and keto on. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just um, don't worry if uh, other people are uh, having better success than you. And especially, well, so I don't know if you, you caught this. Um, Women's World Magazine uh, about two weeks ago ran a article about keto shakes. Or actually, they called it keto smoothies. And they contacted me to get um, some information about keto. I guess they consider me an expert, you know. <laughs> and so I gave them this rather – so they, they sent me an, an email with uh, questions. the questions. Yeah. And I gave them about five or six pages worth of answers. And they condensed it down to two sentences. <laughs> <laughs> But it's it's been interesting because we keep on getting all these really nice old ladies who saw something in Women's World magazine and want more information about these keto shakes. But uh, one of the points that I, I made in the, the that, that they took out, which is too bad, probably just because it was too verbose, was that different people have success with a ketogenic diet in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, some people are looking for weight loss. Some people are looking to stave off Alzheimer's or they're treating depression um, or they're, they just like the way it makes them feel. And um, a lot of times, especially women, will start a ketogenic diet and they won't see the, the weight loss mm -hmm. like they want. Yeah, it takes a while. And we'll have ladies who, yeah, my I started... And then my husband started about a month after me. And he lost 15 pounds. Yeah, he's lost 15 pounds, and I've only lost five. It's like, okay. <laughs> You've lost five, first off. But it's harder for women. And also, w one thing we emphasize to them is, well, have you taken measurements? No. Do your pants fit better? Oh, yeah, they do. Then well, you've lost weight. Guess what? <laughs> this number hasn't changed very yeah. much, but that doesn't mean you haven't changed things. So. You've lost fat. Your body's remodeling, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to lose pounds. Yeah. And so concentrate on why you want to do a, a, a ketogenic diet. You know, you know, find your why and stick to that. Um, and don't don't be too concerned if you're – journey isn't the same as other people's. Yep. You're only really in competition with yourself. Yep. You need to make yourself better than you were yesterday, whether it's a kinder person, whether it's a person that eats healthier, whether it's a person that 
and open the door for someone. I, I don't know. You're just in competition with yourself. You're not going to be Jane so-and-so down the street because you're not that person. Your body's not the same and your personality's not the same. So why feel like you have to look the same as her? Yep. Exactly. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes is, Look in the mirror. There. That is your only competition. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. That's perfect. And, and Miriam has decided that <clears throat> she um, she's doing kind of the, the weight loss challenge too. And if she uh, succeeds, she's getting her eyelashes done. Yeah, I'm getting some <laughs> eyelashes. <laughs> okay, That's so here. let's I'm change that succeed. vocabulary to when she succeeds. Yeah. yeah. When well, not if. It's... What I'm getting at is um, not using food as a reward because it would have been like if you succeed, then you get to go out to dinner or something like that. Oh, you know what we do? My husband and I ne hardly never go out to dinner anymore, mostly because I just find my body doesn't like dinner, I mean, oh, yeah. like restaurant food. And so our big thing, our date night is going to get a massage. Hey, oh, that sounds go. good. I yeah. Like those <laughs> we go to those. Do you guys have in your town those like Chinese reflexology places that they do the foot massage and it's like twenty five bucks or something? Probably. I don't, I don't know. We might. I know we have acupuncture yeah. and stuff. Well, it's acupressure, and it's like okay. you get to keep your clothes on, but it's an amazing <laughs> experience, and huh. it's reasonably priced. Miriam did That's go nice. have the fish eat all the dead, yeah, dead did, skin off I their did foot. Do that. It, was, it was pretty freaky. <laughs> with, with our daughters, that was pretty funny. <laughs> oh, I think you told me about that. Yeah, it was really fun, actually. Oh, that's but cool. It's kind of weird. Well, hey, you guys, I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show today. It's a pleasure to hear from you again. And I'm so excited that you're doing well, both physically and with your business. That's really cool. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for so having much. us. Okay, you guys, happy new year. Happy new year, too. Yeah, you too. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening to The Great Show today. I just love this couple. They are just such a wonderful inspiration to me, and I'm sure they are to you as well. So if you like the show, please head on over to iTunes and give us a rating and review. And for all their links to the um, Keto Utah and everything else that's going on, please head on over to the show notes at BeWellBeKeto.com. Go out and make it a great day, you guys. Thanks so much for listening. This podcast contains the opinion and thoughts of its host and guests. It is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subjects covered. All statements made on the podcast have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. If the listener requires professional assistance or advice, please contact your personal medical doctor. Both host and guests specifically disclaim any responsibility for any liability, loss, or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the contents of these episodes. Like I said, this is my opinion and I could be wrong.